Kodak was once a big name in the camera industry, dominating the photography market all over the world. If you ever find an old photo of the 1970s, chances are that it was clicked with a Kodak camera on a film and paper which was manufactured by Kodak also. Despite being the one and only favorite of the photographic industry around the world, this giant company got bankrupt in 2012. So what went so wrong with Kodak? Why did the world's leading imaging company fall? This is the very topic we are going to discuss today. So let's start the tale of Kodak that doesn't have a happy ending. Kodak was established by George Eastman and Henry A. Strong in 1892. For most of the 20th century, Kodak was the world's leading manufacturer of the photographic film and was considered to be the world's undisputed leader in the photographic industry. By 1968, Kodak had almost 80% of the global photography market share in its pocket. The company had a solid strategy for making profits called the razor and blades. This story implies that you sell the razor at a very low price and after that, when consumers need blades to use the razor, you sell the blades at a higher price and make a profit. With that strategy, Kodak used to sell its cameras at a very low price and sell the paper, film, and other materials for printing the photo at a higher price. Using this business model, Kodak was able to generate tremendous revenue and became a huge success. Kodak also launched a marketing campaign called Kodak Moments which referred to an unforgettable moment of a person's life. With this expression, Kodak was able to create an emotional attachment with its consumers. This campaign was a huge success and significantly increased sales of the company. Everything was going well until the arrival of new technology, more specifically, the digital cameras. You might be surprised to know that the first digital camera was invented by a person named Steve Sasson who was an electrical engineer at Kodak. What's more astonishing is the response of the high officials when Steve approached them with his invention. They suggested to Steve that he should keep it to himself and not tell anyone about it. And those high officials at Kodak had their reasons to say so. Because of the razor and blade, Kodak was making most of its profits from films and paper used in photography. A digital camera would ultimately make the film and paper unnecessary, thus ignoring the digital camera technology. To keep the current profitability intact, they went on risking the entire future of the company. That's how you shoot yourself in the foot. And that was the first business blunder for Kodak. Though Kodak let the idea of the digital camera pass through its hands, Fujifilm, a renowned Japanese imaging company, adopted the technology and implemented it on a large scale. Realizing the potential of what digital cameras are capable of, other camera manufacturers like Sony, Canon, and others also followed the same path and started investing in digital camera technology. In 1981, Sony came up with its first digital camera prototype called Mavica. After that, Kodak became a little concerned about the technological disruption caused by digital cameras. Vince Baraba, Kodak CEO at the time, carried out comprehensive research to find out the core technologies of digital cameras and the likelihood of their adoption. The research concluded with two main insights. One, the digital camera is going to replace traditional film and paper photography. Two, the adoption of digital cameras would take some time, roughly about 10 years. At that moment, Kodak had roughly 10 years to make a transition from traditional photography to digital camera business. However, Kodak put little effort into digital technology. Rather, it invested itself more in verbal spats and arguments with other competitors to establish the thought that film and paper photography is better than digital photography and consumers like the feel of touching a photograph. It also had a firm belief that at least consumers of USA won't favor any Japanese company like Fujifilm or Sony over Kodak. Kodak took pride in its traditional business and its overconfidence prevented them from seeing the future. On the other hand, Fujifilm and other big companies were heavily invested in researching more on digital photography and establishing themselves in the market.
Kodak also made some bad investments during those years. In 1988, Kodak invested about $5.1 billion in sterling drugs in a hope that the chemical business would help them in manufacturing photo paper. But later on, Kodak realized that the drugs that Sterling was dealing with had little use in photography. Ultimately, Kodak had to sell it out with half the purchase price. So instead of investing money on bringing on new technology into the company, Kodak wasted its time and money on acquiring unnecessary small companies and establishing their blind optimism about film and paper photography. But still, Kodak had a chance to get back on the right track in 1989. When the board of directors was choosing the next CEO of the company, they had two options. Phil Samper, who was a digital photography enthusiast, and K.R. Whitmore, who was more of a traditional mindset. And the board recruited Whitmore. Mr. Whitmore confirmed that he would make sure Kodak stayed closer to its core business in film and photography chemicals. It was the last nail to the coffin for Kodak. After that, the decline of Kodak became inevitable. But at the beginning of 2000, Kodak finally understood that it had to stop what it was doing and adopt new technology. But it was too late by then. Other big giants like Fujifilm, Sony, Nikon were already in the market with their exceptional popularity among the consumers. So Kodak was no longer the king of the global photography market. In 2004, Kodak officially stopped producing its traditional film cameras and put more focus on digital camera. In 2005, the global camera market share was still the highest for Kodak, but it was so close to losing its leading position. By 2009, the global camera market share was led by Canon, and Kodak was way behind Sony, Nikon, Samsung, and others. In 2012, Kodak faced bankruptcy, which ultimately forced them to get out of the camera business. But Kodak didn't vanish totally. The company still exists with much smaller capacity and shifted its focus from photography. Recently, it has been reported that Kodak is working on manufacturing the COVID vaccine. So that was all about the downfall of Kodak. Kodak would be a name to remember for the improvement and discoveries it brought to the camera and imaging industry. Yet, its over-optimism on its core business and reluctance to change with time will also be a lesson for every entrepreneur in the camera market. Hope you liked the video, and if you have learned anything new or want to share your thoughts regarding this video, let us know in the comment section.